Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Robert. Um, for those of you who have seen my recent videos, you'll notice I'm in yet a different background. I'm in hotel number three. I am now in Atlanta, um, here for the Decatur Book Festival, and I've never attended that before, so I'm looking forward to that and seeing some of the other booktubers or booktube watchers who are also here for the weekend. Um, I know Kendra Winchester is here. She was kind of the driving force behind the meetup of people involved in booktube, so I look forward to seeing her again. She was the very first booktuber that I had ever met in person, even before I started my channel. Um, I'm just here with a little bit of a Friday Reads catch-up since I haven't been doing Friday Reads the last couple of weeks. Um, and since the last time I did one, I've read quite a few books and I've started quite a few more, so I'll go through them fairly quickly. Uh, the first one I finished was My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshfeg. And I mentioned this when I was reading, when I started reading it, that I was not getting along with it well. And if anything, it got worse for me. I just, I just absolutely did not like this novel one bit. Um, I think she's a talented writer in terms of prose style, but the content just left me asking, who cares? Why write this book? There's no point to it. Um, and there's kind of a, a twist at the end that I won't give it away, um, but I'll say that I think it's pretty cheap and gratuitous. So um, one of my friends here on BookTube, um, really like this book. And so I'll, I'll put a link to Claire from Claire's Reads um, video on this book where she talked about why she liked it so much. Claire and I seem to disagree on a lot of books, even though we get along really well. Um, so I'll link to Claire's view and you can listen to her view if you want to hear why she enjoyed it. I just thought it was pointless. Um, didn't, didn't like the characters, didn't like, uh, and maybe you're not supposed to like the main character, but there wasn't anybody else to talk about. She's so self-involved. I just, I couldn't get past that. Uh, then I finished a book that I wasn't expecting to like so much that I really enjoyed, and it's The Masterpiece by Fiona Davis. Uh, it's a book set in two different time periods about two different women whose stories intersect. Uh, the first one is Clara, and she starts off, I believe it starts off in 1928 with her story. She is an artist who's moved to New York City. She's teaching at the Grand Central uh, School of Art right in Grand Central Terminal, and she's trying to make a name for herself as an illustrator. So she's looked down upon by some of the, the, the high and mighty uh, fine arts students. Um, and she's also the only woman on the faculty, and so she's really having to fight in a man's world, and she ends up becoming very successful, but uh, there's some interesting things in her life as well. The other woman it starts in 1974 with her story. Her name is Virginia. She has just been abandoned by her longtime husband, and she's going back into the workforce because she needs money, and she starts working for the law firm um, that is based in Grand Central Terminal that's actually the company that runs the terminal and the train line. And she ends up working in the information booth in the terminal itself. And she starts to discover things about the, the controversy where this company is trying to basically destroy Grand Central Terminal and build a skyscraper on top of it. And she she thinks that's a horrible idea and she starts to discover things about the, the terminal itself that makes her want to try to save it. And then their two stories, of course, intersect towards the end of the book in, in a really brilliant way. So I really enjoyed this one. I, w I wasn't expecting to. I didn't know anything about the history of Ga Grand Central uh, Terminal, um, but it, it was really, it was, it was fascinating. You've got a little bit of a mystery going on. You've even got a little hint of a ghost story going on um, and some great art history. It's, it's really kind of a cool story. And then the next one I finished, um, I've already done a full video on, and that was Charles Dickens' Hard Times, which was the most recent read-along video that I just posted yesterday. So I'm not going to talk about that again here, but if you'd like to know more about Hard Times, please check out that read-along video. Um, the next one I finished is one that you've probably heard about on most channels already, um, There There by Tommy Orange. It was the first book that I was able to snag of the ones that I want to read um, on new releases from my new library in Durham. Um, it's a story of many natives, many Indians, 
coming together at this big powwow in Oakland. It's the first time Oakland has hosted a powwow and they're really concerned with making it go on uh, and be a, a, a good event for everybody. But you, you get all these different stories and then they all kind of intersect around the powwow itself. I absolutely adore his writing style. I did get a little bit confused, and maybe it's because I'm in transition and I wasn't focusing as much as I should have, but I got a little bit confused with the wide range of characters. I couldn't remember when a character showed up again what that character's story was from the previous time I had seen that character's name. And that may, like I said, that may be that I wasn't paying close enough attention or if that's just the nature of this beast that has so many different characters. Uh, but I really enjoyed it, and it does live up to all of its advanced hype. I, I thought it was a, a very interesting book. Uh, the next one I read is one that uh, Jasmine from Jasmine Reads, Jasmine's Reads, uh, recommended to me when we were shopping together at Quail Ridge Books in Raleigh, North Carolina. She was visiting uh, Raleigh and I went over and spent an hour and a half with, with her and Cam in the bookstore. And it's Rose Tremaine's The Gustav Sonata. I had read Rose Tremaine's, I think it was Restoration, years and years and years ago because it was shortlisted for the booker. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember if it won or not, but I remember that's why I picked it up. And I enjoyed that. Um, this one, I, I did enjoy the writing style, but I was a little bit disappointed because I was going into it thinking it was going to be all about classical music. I mean, the name Gustav Sonata, and there's, there's musical uh, uh, stanzas, uh, uh, scores on the, on the cover, and it really isn't that much about music, but it's still an interesting story. It's the story of a young boy, uh, Gustav, and his parents uh, in Switzerland, and um, another young boy who moves into the area that Gustav befriends, Anton, and then it's also about uh, Anton's family, and it's also about the police chief who is um, Gustav's father's boss on the police force in this small town in Switzerland, and it's how all these different stories intertwine, and it's told in three sections out of chronological order. You, you first learn about Gustav and um, Anton, and then you back up and get Gustav's mother's story, and then you go into the future and get the rest of Gustav and Anton's story. And that's it was, that was very well done. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I would have liked to it had it to be even more about classical music, but that's okay. It was, it was good for what it was. Uh, and the one that I just finished on today's drive to Atlanta um, in the car, I was listening to the audio version of The Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs by Stephen Brusati. Um, this is another one of those experiences that convinces me that unless I can listen to an audiobook in the car where I'm not distracted by 900 other things, or I re read the text edition along with the audiobook, Audiobooks don't work for me in other situations because I kept trying to listen to this one at home and I would either fall asleep because the voice was soothing or I would start focusing on something else and I wasn't listening closely enough. And so a lot of it slipped by me in the early part. So I ended up going back and listening to it more than once. Um, the part that I finished up with, though, uh, was super clear to me because I was just driving and I had nothing else to focus on except the road and and the audiobook. So I'm starting to figure that out for me that audiobooks work really well in the car and they work really well when I'm reading the text version along with them. They just don't work for me any other time. Um, but I really enjoyed the book. Uh, it's it's popular science, but you learn a lot more about what came even before the dinosaurs than anything I've ever read before. And the last section, which I was listening to today on the drive, was the theories and how those theories were proven um, about the extinction of the dinosaurs. And that was absolutely riveting. I just thought it was so impressively done. He even at one point paints it like a scene in a novel for several pages and goes hour by hour what the dinosaurs in North America uh, would have experienced because um, T-Rex, which of course is the dinosaur we all think of first, was primarily um, based in Western North America in the Western United States. And that's close enough to the Yucatan Peninsula where this devastating, they don't know if it was a meteor uh, or a comet that hit the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico that 
eventually wiped out the dinosaurs, whether, um, and he, he takes you through that hour by hour experience of what those T-Rexes and the other dinosaurs around them might have experienced. I just think it's a, it's a brilliant book. A lot of fun to listen to. Uh, I've got two other books started and I'm about to start some new ones. So I'll just briefly mention those. Um, I'm start, I've already started Celestial Navigation by Ann Tyler, which is my next read-along title coming from the 20th Century Backlist. So I'm not going to say anything more about that because I'll do a full video on that when I finish it. And then for the rest of today's uh, car ride, I started The Girls of Atomic City by Denise Kiernan, which is about the, the young women who were sent to um, Oak Ridge, Tennessee. They didn't know where they were going. They didn't know what the project was that they were working on. Of course, it was the, the uranium enrichment project going along with the Manhattan Project and developing the atomic bomb. Um, and I've just gotten started. I've only listened to about an hour of that. I think it's about 12 or 13 hours long. Um, but it's it, the writing style is engaging. Uh, the story that I've listened to so far makes me want to keep listening. So I'm looking forward to some more of that, especially on the, on the car ride back to Durham on Monday. Later today, I have to start reading Brewster's Millions by George Barr McCutcheon. I don't know anything about this book. This was my jury duty assignment with Steve Donahue. I'm sure several of you have heard about how he basically impaneled a jury of 12 of us without our knowledge and said, you will read this book and we will discuss it on Voxer. Uh, I was one of the, the chosen uh, jury members, so I'll be starting to read that tonight because our first discussions are tomorrow on that. I'll probably miss most of those discussions until the evening because I'll be at the book festival. And then I picked up three of my reserves from the library, all came in at the same time, and I'll be starting one or two of them fairly quickly. Uh, I have three weeks to finish them. The first one, everybody's read, uh, Tin Man by Sarah Winman. I think I may be the last person to read that book, and I'm looking forward to it. And it's not even very long, so I should be able to breeze through it. Um, the one I'm probably looking forward to the most, though, is The Court Dancer by Kyung Suk Shin, uh, which has just recently been translated into English and released here in the United States. It's about a court dancer in, at the end of the 19th century in Korea, which is the very end of the Korean monarchy. Um, the reason this one excites me so much is that's the exact period and the king and queen at the time um, are the subject of the historical novel that I'm trying to gather notes for to write. Um, the, the queen dies in 1895. She's assassinated by the Japanese. And then 15 years later, 1910, Japan annexes Korea, and that's the end of the monarchy. So it really is the end of a monastic dynasty, not just that family's dynasty, but the whole line of family dynasties in Korean history. And so this is set in the same period that I'm, write, I'm planning to write about. So I'm really interested to read this one for the cultural knowledge and background. Even though it's not directly related to the story that I'm trying to tell, it's going to be able to color a lot of the background material that I've only been able to get in textbooks so far. I hope to get to visit Korea this year and do some hands-on uh, research because the palace apparently has been restored to that same time period and so I'll be able to get a really big feeling for the atmosphere. We'll see if I get get to visit there in the spring perhaps. And then the other one that I got and I don't know much about is So Much Life Left Over by Louis de Bernier. Um, he wrote of course Corelli's Mandolin, a, a famous novel that I have not read yet. Um, it's apparently a story about a group of people right after World War I and they're left with the aftermath of the relationships and how they've been affected by the war. And that's really all I know about this book. And so I'm looking forward to starting that one as well. So that's what I've been up to. I'll be at the Decatur Book Festival for the next two days, um, Saturday and Sunday, and then I'll be driving back to Durham on Monday and starting the, the moving in process at my new house. Um, so lots going on. I'm excited to see some people tomorrow at the book festival and to see some authors talk that I've enjoyed their works and then just browse all the different e exhibits and stalls. I've never been to a big, big book festival. I lived near the Miami book festival for three years, but I could never really go because it was um, during the school 
week. So this will be a treat for me. Okay, everybody, I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, say hi. If you're at the, at the book festival, let me know. Maybe we'll bump into each other. And I'll talk to you all again probably early next week when I'm back in Durham. Bye, everybody. Thank you.